In this particular lecture, let's go ahead and learn how memos actually help prevent re-rendering of components. So first of all, we need to understand how exactly is this re-rendering happening. So what we have learned until now is when you render the parent component, the child re-renders as well. So let's take a look at this thing in action first so as to see how this happens. So what I would do here is that I would create two components. First component would be parent component. So I would say parent dot js and then i will create another component called as the child component so i will name this thing as child.js so child.js now let's add the regular code in there so in the parent what i would do is that i would first go ahead and make this thing export default function parent and here i won't pass any props and here what I would do is that I'll make this thing return a simple div, which would say something like this is a parent component. And now in order to make this component re-render, we are going to add a bunch of code in there. But even before that, uh, let's create the child component as well. So export default function child, and that's going to be returning a div, which would say this is a child component okay so once we have them now let's go ahead and let's import the child component and nest it inside the parent so here i would go ahead go right inside the div here and inside the div itself i'll go ahead and make use of the child okay so once we have this child here uh, let's add this parent component to app.js so let's get rid of the table here and i would say parent Okay, so once we have this, let's take a look at it and see how it looks like. So if we take a look at the output, first of all, we have that this is a parent component and then this is a child component. Now, in order to re-render the parent component, what we are going to do is that we are going to use a state here and we are going to create a button which would increment that state. So here, let's go inside the parent and over here, let's create a state. So I would say const, uh, let's call this particular state as parent count and the function to change this parent count would be let's say set that's going to be parent count and I'm going to make use of the use state here and initially I'm going to set the state to zero and in a similar fashion let's also go ahead and create another state for holding the value of the child as well so I'll create another state for child count so I would say child count and this could be set child count and this is also going to be initialized to zero. And now let's display those two states over here. So what I would do is that I would first go ahead and display the parent count here. So right inside this div, even before displaying the child, I would go ahead and create a h1 here and I would say something like uh, parent count is and display the parent count here. So I would say parent count and then I will make a button to basically go ahead and increment this count. So let's say this button is going to be here. So I would say button. This would say increment parent count. And once we have that, let's actually make this button by adding an on click to this. So I would say on click equals and I would create a method called as change parent count. So once we have this method, let's design this method right up over here. So in order to design that, I would say const change parent count. This is going to be an arrow function. And over here, I'll simply go ahead and make use of set parent count to set the parent count to the current count value plus one. So I would say parent count plus one. So once this thing is done, let's also make sure to import use state here. So once that is imported, I'll save this and then I'll go back to the browser. And over here, as you can see, it says parent count is zero. And if I click on this, as you can see, the count over here is incremented. Now let's go back to VS code and design the same kind of counter for the child component as well. So over here, we already have the child component and we already have the state for this child component as well. And here what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go ahead and pass the child count to the child component. So here I would say count 
equals and I'll simply pass in the value of child count here and I'm going to display that value up over here inside this particular component. So I would actually go ahead and replace this with something like uh, child count is. So here I would say child count is and then let's just display that count value up over here by saying count and also make sure that as you have passed in this count as a prop I need to accept that prop here so let's destructure it over here and pass in count so let me make sure that the code is correct so what we have done is that we have created the child count we have passed in the child count over here so this should be child count and once we do that uh, let's go back here and as you can see now it says child count is zero parent count is zero and if I increment this, there's no effect on the child here. So let's also create a button for incrementing the child count as well. So now what I would do is that I would copy this button, paste it up over here. And now instead of having to say change parent count, I would say change child count. So change child count and this should say increment child count here. And once we have that, let's also create a method as well. So I'll simply copy this method, paste it up over here and I would say change the child count and here I would say set child count and here set the child count by current value plus one. So child count plus one. So if we do that, if we go back here, now if I click on this increment child count option or button, uh, this is going to say that the child count is nine. Now let's clean this thing up a little bit. So let's add a couple of spaces there. So here I would go ahead and add a space over here. And let's also add some space over here as well. Okay, so now there should be some space here. Now what happens here is that if you inspect this, if you take a look at the DOM tree here, if you go to the root, if you go to the app, if you go to this div, here you will have the child component as well as the parent component. So this is the parent component and this is the child component. And what happens is that when you just go ahead and increment the parent count, the child count component has to be re-rendered as well. So that means, let's say now if I click on this increment parent count option, this is incremented and this should be re-rendered, which actually makes sense. But technically what's happening is that this is being re-rendered as well. So in order to check that, you could actually go inside the child component. And we all know that whenever a particular component is re-rendered, the code inside it would be re-executed. So inside the child component, I could say console.log and I could create a message like the child component is being re-rendered. So if I save that and if I go back here, if I open up the developer console, let's see what it shows up over here. So it says that the child component is being re-rendered, which is fine because the page was refreshed. But now if I click on increment parent count, the parent count is incremented, but you will also get a message over here which says something like the child component is being re-rendered. And that does not make any sense because the value inside the child component has remained the same. And if I click on increment child count, it actually makes sense that the component is re-rendered because the value of this is actually changing. But the illogical thing which is happening here is that even if we change the count value of parent, the child component is being re-rendered and we don't want that. So this is the problem and this exact problem can be prevented by using memos in React. So in the upcoming lecture, we'll take a look at how memos could be used to prevent re-rendering of the child component when it's not required. So in the upcoming lecture, let's go ahead and let's learn how to use memos. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.